In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Luke chapter 7, verses 2 through 10, where I'll ask the question, how can I be like the centurion? Luke chapter 7, verses 2 through 10 says, Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, and said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. This is one of those miraculous encounters that Jesus has where the people who are around him trust Jesus more than the Jews or the teachers of the law. It's one of those amazing things where a Gentile is somebody who has greater faith than the people of God who had received the law, who had been thoroughly trained in what it says and what it means. And Jesus points this fact out. He says that in all of Israel, he hasn't found anybody who has faith like this Roman centurion. Because the Roman centurion trusts that Jesus doesn't even have to be in proximity with the sick servant. All he needs to do is say, be healed, and he'll be healed. He's got such profound faith that Jesus has the power over life and death, over illness and health, that he can simply say the words or do whatever it is that Jesus does to accomplish his miracles, and it will happen. Jesus is impressed by this level of faith. And it's a level of faith that we ought to attempt to attain to. So here are three thoughts from Luke chapter 7, verses 2 through 10, where I'll ask the question, how can I be like the centurion? Thought number one, love God's people. The centurion loved God's people. He sends the elders from the synagogue to go and get Jesus. And what do they say? They say, listen, Jesus, this guy is a good guy. He loves the people of God. He built for us our synagogue. He trusts that we are truly the people of God. He believes it. He believes in the law. He believes all of these wondrous things about our people, all of our stories, all of our ancestry, all of these things that make us distinct from the rest of the nations of the world. This centurion believes it. He loves God's people. And if we are to be like this centurion who has this amazing faith, we too must love God's people. We must love those who are devoted to our Heavenly Father. We must love those who have faith in Christ Jesus. We must love those within whom the Holy Spirit dwells. Thought number two, recognize Christ's power. If we're going to be like the centurion, we need to recognize Christ's power. Here's the deal. This centurion had heard of all the wondrous things Jesus could do, and he believed it. He believed that Jesus truly had power over life and death, sickness and health. He believed that Jesus could simply say the word and his servant would be healed. He truly believed that Jesus was able to do all of these wondrous things. If we're to be like the centurion, then we too need to actually believe that Jesus is able to accomplish all of these things that the Bible says he has accomplished. And all of these things that the Bible says he is going to accomplish. We need to recognize Christ's power in the world, just as the centurion did, if we are going to have a faith like his. Thought number three, understand authority. If we're going to have a faith like a centurion, we need to have a deep understanding of authority just like this centurion had. And he explains it so simply. He says, I'm a man under authority, meaning I take orders, but I also have men who are under my authority. I give orders. And when he gives orders, what happens? The soldier that he says go to goes. The soldier that he says come to comes. The servant that he says do this does it. 
He understands how authority works. And he understands that if Christ has this power, that he's able to heal the sick and raise the dead, that he has sufficient authority to do that regardless of his physical presence. He's able to accomplish these things because God is working through him. That he isn't bound by time and space and these other things that we are bound by. He understands authority to a degree that a lot of us are unwilling to accept. He understands this idea that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. We need to recognize that as well. That all authority in heaven and on earth belongs to Christ. And it is for this reason we place our trust, our hope, and our faith in him. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Luke chapter 7 and 8. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.